All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, James Dolan, the owner of the New York Knicks, reminds me a lot of a tooth that needs to be extracted. Until you get that tooth extracted, you're not going to be able to enjoy your life experience. You're not going to be able to eat the foods that you like to eat. Enjoy it with the savor that you like to enjoy your food. You're going to be up at night suffering from toothaches and pains. You're not going to be able to enjoy your woman kissing her and things of that nature until you get that tooth removed. It's the same thing with James Dolan, the current owner of the New York Knicks. Now, the real enigma is how is that going to come to pass? How can the Knicks actually rid themselves of an owner? Adam Silver may eventually have to step in because the New York Knicks, even though in true New York fashion, <laughs> they're more blustered than substance. Something has to be done there because they are a grandfather franchise. They go all the way back to the 1950s. And in order for them to start to shine again, a lot of the luster that at one time was on the Knicks franchise has dissipated because James Dolan is the owner. So in order for them to reinvigorate that shine that they once had, they're going to have to find a way to either get rid of him as the, as the majority owner or maybe he can execute some type of subterfuge where he acts as if he's selling the team to someone else and he's still the shadow owner or what have you. But presentation is key. By most reports, the players across the league respect the Knicks front office because they've made some changes in that area, but they still do not trust James Dolan. And now Andre Iguodala has pretty much confirmed the overall sentiment, that being that major players, top-notch players, do not want to sign with the New York Knicks because they look at their owner as a big clown. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Start with Andre Godala, who was on a media tour promoting his book, The Sixth Man. We had him on the jump Friday. It was great. Um, he was asked, though, over the weekend about KD and Clay's free agency. And on CNBC, he gave a parting shot to the New York Knicks. Take a listen. I think they'll both be back with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, we all keep like brother. I'm not sure about that. From what I'm hearing, KD is considering Brooklyn. He's also considering the L.A. Clippers teaming up with Kawhi Leonard. I'm not quite sure if Kawhi is going to be keen on that because he'll pretty much have to wait a year for KD to come back unless KD promises him that he'll be back by March or April and all Kawhi has to do is carry the team to the playoffs. We'll see. But I'm not quite as sure as I once was that KD is going to come back to the Warriors. And as I've already stated, this injury, the Achilles tendon tear, is all he needs to justify why he would leave a place that number one taught him how to win, number two can offer him the most money, <laughs> And number three would give him the most talented teammates. Now he could pretty much leave guilt free. Contact, uh, but regardless of any of that, uh, if both did decide to leave, they would still be my brother. I still keep in contact with them uh, as much as possible. And I uh, just wish the best for both of those guys. They come back full strength. You're crushing the Knicks fans uh, out here. Uh, this three part BS or real talk? So we can do this real quick. KD coming back to the Warriors. What do you got? Come on. As of right now, I'm saying no, but you never know what tomorrow could bring. Katie might look across the NBA landscape and say, you know what? It would probably be best if I go back to the Golden State Warriors. Especially if by some miracle, the LA Lakers were able to sign Kawhi Leonard. If you're Kevin Durant, why would you go anywhere but Golden State if you plan on having an even remote chance of winning a championship? The only team that even possibly would be able to take down an LA Laker team with LeBron, Kawhi, and Anthony Davis would be a fully healthy Golden State Warriors team. That would be the only squad that might even be able to think about it. I'm on the spur of the moment. Go. Oh, you think Katie's going back to the Warriors? Yes. Okay. Clay coming back to the Warriors. Of course. Of course Clay is coming back to the Warriors. Clay is Clay is old steady. He's old faithful. There he goes. Yes. No one's going to the Knicks. Sorry. Yes? BS or real talk? Real talk. Real Whoa. talk. Whoa. <laughs> The Knicks are going to end up with somebody like Terry Rozier or some shit like that. They're going to have to build through the draft. That's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to stop concentrating on free agents and focus on building through the draft. Man, all right. I, I, this is a two-parter because you said you think KD's staying and you think therefore no one's going to the Knicks. Remember, Kevin Durant stated during the NBA regular season that he was going to sign back with whoever could offer him the most money. Obviously, that's the Golden State Warriors. So something may have changed in his mind over the course of this season. Or maybe when he stated that he was going to sign with whoever would give him the most money, that was a cryptic statement in some way, shape, or form. Maybe he was talking about whatever franchise could offer him the best financial package, both on and off the court. Or maybe, hell, maybe he's talking about money under the table. Who the hell knows? 
You're exactly right. I, I think that KD is in a good place. Uh, I think that this injury probably... KD actually is in a great place for himself. Because even if you want to, to push the narrative that he no longer trusts the Golden State Warriors medical staff, he has them over a barrel so much that if he were to suffer a, another injury, a subsequent injury, were he to return to Golden State, they would treat him with such kid gloves that he'd pretty much be able to lay back with five pillows under his head, you know, sipping on margaritas, even if he had a damn ankle turn. <laughs> Brought him to reality, you know, and the support that his teammates are giving him, uh, you know, once you... <laughs> Fisdale better get used to that expression because it's going to be a very frustrating tenure for him. I hope that everything works out, but I just don't see them signing any major free agents. And in today's NBA, if you cannot allocate the top-level talent, especially with players between the ages of 25 and 30, you're not going to win. One of your brothers, you, you get to understand how close you are. And I think just seeing him injured throughout that whole series and him hanging out in the locker room and walking his teammates halfway out to the court and meeting them as they're coming in, um, they were building more chemistry. And they sort of seen then that they all need each other. Totally agree. Kevin Durant needs Golden State, at least if he wants to win. Golden State needs Kevin Durant if they hope to continue to win and pick up where they left off from last season. Not from this season, but from the previous season. If they want to say, you know what, people are saying now that our 3P dreams are dead. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to circle the wagons and we're going to create a whole other opportunity for a 3P by winning the next three championships. That would be a great challenge for that team. And then they could ride off on, you know, on their high horses and retire or what have you. But if they could do that, that would be phenomenal for all of their legacies. And I think that Durant would only have a chance to do that on the Golden State Warriors. Because if he were to come back with their team next season, let's say he rejoins the squad in March and they made a playoff run, maybe even won a championship. No one would say anymore that he just joined a team that didn't need him. Because after last year's finals, everyone knows that, yes, they need Kevin Durant. And I never bought into this notion that Golden State was a 70-win team even without KD. In professional sports, there are so many quantum leaps that take place based on stylistics and, and also coaching brands, things of that nature. When you have someone who's a coach, say for example Mike D'Antoni in the mid-2000s, when he brought in that system, that made the rest of the league take a quantum leap forward. Even Phil Jackson back in the early 90s. He made the NBA take a quantum leap forward. The Detroit Pistons in the late 80s, they made the league take a quantum leap forward. You had other squads who never even won championships, like the New York Knicks, who implemented a very intense weight training regimen that other teams started to copy in the early 90s. That caused a quantum leap in the NBA when it came to their outlook on physical conditioning. The Golden State Warriors and their style of play caused a quantum leap. So after what Golden State did in 2014-2015 season, the league caught up to them very quickly. You started to see more teams utilize the 30-foot three-point shot and things of that nature. So by KD's second season on the squad, it was very obvious that he was a necessity. He was not an extra. KD needs them more than anything. And I don't think at this stage of his career, battling back from this major injury, you want to go somewhere and start to lead a franchise. Agreed. If he could jump back on and right, right, just, fill in just where go. he's been... Right. I think it's going to be a better place for him. I believe that Brooklyn's going to have a major offer for him. I believe that he wants to play with Kyrie Irving. I believe Kyrie Irving wants to play in Brooklyn. <laughs> so that, to me, you put the pieces together. I don't think he's, he's staying, but I, I, it would be interesting if he did stay because I think if he was to rehab with the Warriors and to win there, mm -hmm. it would mean so much. I think he'd be fully, I think he already is yeah. now, finally fully embraced by Warriors fans. But it would be like that. I think that he's always been fully embraced by the Warriors fans. I just think that the media narrative on KD would have to be recalibrated. You guys would actually have to give him more respect because what the Toronto Raptors proved in last year's NBA Finals is that, no, the Warriors just can't lose two of their prominent players and still win. Like the media narrative has been, that they were just so super talented. They were a super team. Nobody was calling the Golden State Warriors a super team when the 2014-2015 season started. When the Cleveland Cavaliers 2014-2015 season started, they were being called a super team. They had LeBron James, they had Kyrie, they had Kevin Love. So give me a break. The Golden State Warriors did not become considered a super team until the 2016-2017 season when they signed Kevin Durant. But I do agree, once again, 
that if KD were to come back to the Golden State Warriors, the the perception of him would certainly have to be adjusted. Now, will KD sign with the Brooklyn Nets? Who knows? I wouldn't advise it. Just because you're friends with Kyrie Irving does not mean that you should team up with him. I say this all the time. You do not really know someone until you live with them. You might think that somebody's your friend. You might think that you have all these things in common. And then you're spending 82 games a season with this guy and you're seeing his emotional ups and downs and things of that nature. And it might cause you to fall out with them. Extra kind of 1.5 type, type of title we talk about right. with what, you know LeBron winning in Cleveland or whatever. If he came back from this Achilles injury and won with that group again, won a championship, I think it would totally cement his legacy. I do think that chemistry is such a good point because I saw it during the finals, right? There were some questions even from inside the locker room of, is he coming back? What, why is he coming back? Why is this taking so long? And I don't think that was Warriors players being upset with Kevin per se. I think right. they were just frustrated over not knowing enough information. Well, maybe it wasn't their business to know. So I do believe that they were upset with Kevin Durant. How could you be frustrated about another person's injury? It's obvious that what you were frustrated about was the media narratives that were being pushed that maybe Kevin Durant is not as hurt as the injury report is stating, or maybe that's not the actual injury that he has. And this is what happens when, once again, you become concerned with trying to control something or someone that is not your business to be trying to control. It's not an absolute, it's not something that you should take for granted that you're going to be fully healthy in the most pivotal moments of your season. You have to take what you have at the moment and ride out with that and leave players alone. Do you really think that Kevin Durant was purposely trying to sit out in the most pivotal moment of the season? Would that have made sense? Of course not. So, I mean, <laughs> anyone trying to propagate these false sentiments that, oh, well, you know, the Golden State Warriors team, you know, they were not really upset with Kevin. They were just confused. No, that makes no sense. It's very obvious that they were frustrated with him. There were certain people on the squad who were frustrated with him, most likely Draymond Green with his feminine ways, thinking that he can control everybody and tell everyone what to do. And it blew up in their face. Um, and then he comes back and he literally sacrifices his body and, and part of his career for them. And I do think, you're right, Scotty, that the teammate, the, there are teammates and guys on that team who were sort of like, oh, right, sort of what he, maybe he, they, they kind of questioned all year, is he in or is he out? How much do we really mean to him? Well, he sacrificed, oh, sound like his girlfriend how much do we really mean to him <laughs> just get your ass out there on the basketball floor and play part of himself that's how much I, mean, I felt like if he was out mm -hmm. he would have been traveling on the road with right. thank you sir he would have made that effort to come back and try to win a title um, Kevin Durant is in a great place financially and he that's didn't true. need another MVP really don't need another title but I think he showed a lot as a man to come out and support his teammates and the fans. Okay, it's going to be interesting. I partially agree with that. I would more say that he showed that he was overly concerned with how he was perceived by his teammates and by the media when he did what he did. But you also have to give him credit for his courage. There's no doubt about that. It's the injury that changed this whole offseason and the future of the NBA. We'll find out. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see what happens with the New York Knicks after this season. They are going to have to adjust their approach. Whatever their paradigm is or whatever the pattern that they've set up in an attempt to, uh, to elevate themselves as a franchise, they're going to have to change it because it's very clear that their perception across the NBA is that they're incompetent. So they're going to have to show many of these, you know, these players, these star players or superstar players who are in their prime, that you can trust us. And what that means is that they're going to have to build their squad from from the floor up because they're not the only ones. It's very obvious that Miami also has some type of reputation across the NBA because there are very few players who are willing to go over there and even give them a chance. Now, we know their cap situation is a bit different from the Knicks. The Knicks have a lot of cap space, but I'm not quite sure if maybe some of the players, they don't want to they don't want to sign to Pat Riley because Pat Riley's kind of old school and he's going to make them do things that maybe they don't want to do. Who knows? But the Knicks, they're going to have to figure out a way to get out from under James Dolan, or they're never going to get any better. They haven't been good for 20 years outside of that one season with Carmelo Anthony and, and Tyson Chandler, Jason Kidd, etc. So peace.